I can confidently say that most Americans should consider owning a Roth IRA. Investing in it for just one year could turn $583 per month into anywhere between $50,000 and $100,000. Doing this for just a few years longer could even grow it to at least $660,000 of tax-free money. The problem is that over the past 12 months, I've talked to eight people in my personal life who were clueless about a Roth IRA. Some of them had no idea a Roth IRA even existed. At first, I didn't believe it. I thought to myself, how is this even possible? Can there really be that many people who either don't know how it works or even know it exists? So I went on a quest to find an answer to this question, and I came across this 156 page study. What I discovered blew my mind. Don't worry, I just printed out the first two pages because I didn't want to waste paper. I didn't print all 156 pages, you weirdos. They found that only 24% of households own a Roth IRA. And of the 15% that actively contribute to an IRA every year, only about 8% of them contributed to a Roth IRA. Let me say that a different way. 76% of households don't have a Roth IRA, and 92% don't even put money into this extremely powerful retirement account. This genuinely bothers me because it's mainly an education problem. How do you know there's a solution to a problem if you don't even know the solution exists? We're going to fix that right here, right now. Not only am I going to show you how the average person can grow their Roth IRA to be worth anywhere between 600,000 and possibly more than a million dollars, I'm also going to get you up to speed on everything else you need to know so you can turn your Roth IRA into one of the best financial decisions that you've ever made in your life. All a Roth IRA is is a retirement account you can put money into, then invest it so it can grow tax-free. The reason the government allows you to never pay taxes on money within the account is because you're contributing to the account with dollars that have already been taxed when your employer paid you. With a Roth IRA, they're pretty much saying, hey, let's make a deal. If you give us your tax money now on the front end, then we will call it even so you don't have to pay us again in the future. This is how it's possible to have a Roth IRA worth a million dollars and the government won't make you pay taxes on any of it. Unlike something like a 401k, 403b, and other retirement accounts, a Roth IRA has nothing to do with your employer. It's a separate account that you open, contribute to, and own on your own outside of your employer-sponsored retirement plan. So technically, you can invest in both your employer-sponsored retirement account and a Roth IRA at the same time. And to be honest, most people should be doing this. Since a Roth IRA isn't offered by your employer, I think this is part of the reason 76% of households don't invest in one. Your employer is going to tell you about the retirement accounts that they offer when you're hired. They have the account and all of your investment options laid out there on a silver platter ready for you to start investing. But if no one in your life ever tells you about a Roth IRA or they don't explain the details of how it works, then you'd never even know it exists. It's literally luck. You're just hoping that someone comes around and tells you about a Roth IRA in your life. And if they don't, then you're screwed. If you wanna get your Roth IRA to be worth a large amount, you can't just deposit that much into the account all at once because there are yearly contribution limits that you have to follow. Listen up here, because like I said, 92% of people don't even contribute as little as $1 to a Roth IRA every year, which is a huge mistake. This year, you can contribute up to $7,000. And if you're 50 or older, you can contribute an additional $1,000, which is called a catch-up contribution. No, not that kind of catch up, you freaks. Since this is an individual retirement account, you and your spouse can each have your own separate Roth IRAs, which means that combined, you can contribute up to $7,000 each if you're under the age of 50. Non-working spouses or stay-at-home parents can also contribute to a Roth IRA up to the contribution limit as long as the other person works and you file taxes jointly. The key word with all of this is up to. It's not an all or nothing type of account where you have to contribute all $7,000 or $8,000. You can also contribute money in any frequency that works best for you and how you get paid. It can be all at once, every week, every month, every quarter, or whatever as long as you don't exceed that $7,000 or $8,000 contribution limit. In fact, I encourage everyone to invest at least something into their Roth IRA, no matter what their financial situation is, even if it's only $100. The main point is to start getting your money 
into this account as soon as possible so it can start growing, which we'll talk about how to grow that money in just a few minutes. Just like there are contribution limits, there are also income limits. To be able to contribute directly to a Roth IRA, you have to have earned income that falls within certain guidelines that the IRS has listed as compensation. On screen, you can see what the IRS defines as compensation. If you wanna learn more about the details, then you can do a quick Google search for pub 590-A. Here are the income limits to be able to contribute to a Roth IRA directly. You're going to have to calculate your modified adjusted gross income on your own to make sure that you fall within the limit. Once again, the key word with these income limits is that you have to fall within these guidelines to be able to contribute directly. Two pieces of good news with this. First, the income limits usually increase from year to year. So if you're over the limit this year, then you may fall within the income limit next year or the year after that. Second, if you're over the income limit, then you can still legally contribute to a Roth IRA indirectly by doing something called a backdoor Roth. I'm not going to go into all of the details, but it's where you contribute to a traditional IRA, then contact your brokerage to have them convert that money to a Roth IRA so you can benefit from the tax-free investment growth. I know this sounds like some weird loophole that might not be legal, but I have done a backdoor Roth and there's thousands of people who have done it quite a few times so I can confirm that it doesn't break any rules. Keep in mind that taxes could play into this decision depending on your tax bracket. So make sure that you do additional research on the topic or talk to your accountant. There's a lot of you out there who aren't 100% sure if you're going to fall under the income limit by the end of the year to be able to contribute directly to a Roth IRA. All it takes is getting a raise at work, getting a higher paid job, or getting an end of year bonus, then the next thing you know, you are over the Roth IRA income limit. There are two ways to completely avoid this potential issue. First, you actually have roughly 16 months to contribute directly to a Roth IRA. So for your 2024 Roth IRA, you have from January 1st, 2024 through April 15th, 2025 to contribute directly to your 2024 Roth IRA. This is how it works every single year, which means you can wait until the calendar year is over, then calculate your modified adjusted gross income. If you are under the income limit, then you have through when taxes are due to contribute to your Roth IRA for the previous year. Pro tip, if you do this, make sure you put the money in the correct year. If you deposit money into your account January through April, then whoever you invest with should give you the option of which Roth IRA year you want the money to go towards. You'll always wanna choose the previous year's contribution bucket to get that one filled up before moving on to the current year's Roth IRA bucket. The second way to get around the income limit issue is to just do a backdoor Roth IRA no matter what. Do this if you 100% know that you wanna to contribute to a Roth IRA to take advantage of the tax-free growth no matter what your income or tax situation is. There isn't a rule saying that you can't do a backdoor Roth if you happen to end up below the Roth IRA income limit, so there's no harm in just going through with it to cover your butt no matter what ends up happening with your income. Now that you understand the rules around getting money into the account, let's talk about the rules around getting money out of your Roth IRA, then we'll cover where to open an account, how to invest the money, and a few other things that you need to know. Since this is a retirement account intended for retirement, they have rules in place to try to prevent you from taking money out. If you try to withdraw money from the account before the age of 59 and a half, then you'll pay a 10% penalty on a portion of the money. Before you freak out, hold on because there's a little bit of a catch to try to avoid paying 10%. First, there are some exceptions to this early withdrawal penalty, which you can see on screen right now. The IRS goes into more detail on each exception. Just do a quick Google search for pub 590-B and it starts on page 25. Second, you will not pay a 10% penalty on any contributions you withdraw from the account but you will pay a 10% penalty on any investment gains that you try to withdraw. For example, let's say you've contributed the maximum amount for the past three years. Over that time, the account has grown to $30,000 because the money was invested. You can withdraw up to $21,000 from the account and not pay the 10% penalty on that money. But if you try to withdraw any of the $9,000 investment gains before 59 and a half, then you will pay a 10% penalty on the portion of that money you withdraw. Keep in mind that once you withdraw money from this account, you cannot put it back in. 
And if you're like me and you don't plan on withdrawing any money before the age of 59 and a half, then none of this matters to people like us. My personal opinion is that the money in this account shouldn't be touched under 99.999% of circumstances. This money is for the 60 plus year old you. Your earning ability is way better the younger you are compared to someone who is in retirement. If an emergency comes up where you're in a financial pinch, then solve the problem with an emergency fund, your current income, or go find a way to make more money so that you don't have to touch your Roth IRA. Please, I am begging you. You can of course do whatever you want with your money, but for gosh sakes, try not to touch the money. To start putting money into a Roth IRA, you need to choose an investing platform where the account will be held. There's a bunch out there that offer a Roth IRA like Fidelity, Vanguard, Charles Schwab, and my favorite, which is M1 Finance. Each one has their pros and cons, so if you have a preferred platform, then stick with that one. I've been contributing to my Roth IRA on M1 Finance since 2019 because I think that it is by far the best platform for long-term buy and hold investors like myself. The process of opening a Roth IRA is pretty easy. In the case of M1 Finance, once you create an account, you'll choose to add account, pick the retirement account option, choose to open a Roth IRA, confirm that this is what you wanna do, then you're done. Yes, it's literally that easy to open an account. This can be done in less than 10 minutes and can change your financial future forever. Seems like a pretty good trade-off to me. If you're interested, I'll have a link down below in the description to a video where I walk you through an M1 Finance tutorial that I created. Once you open your account, you still need to actually invest the money so it has the potential to grow. Remember that a Roth IRA is just an account. Think of it like an empty bucket. If you wanna transport things, you gotta actually put things in that bucket. Just like with a Roth IRA, if you want the money to grow, you have to put investments in that Roth IRA account. I've heard horror stories of people depositing money into their Roth IRA, then forgetting to invest the money, only to realize this mistake many years later when their account hasn't grown by more than their contributions. Because you'll never pay taxes on money within this account, Realistically, we want it to get as big as possible, but that does not mean that you should take on more risk than you can handle by investing in a bunch of random things. If you are someone who already knows what you're doing and you know what you want to invest in, then go do your thing. If you don't, then I'll give you some options based on a few simple buy and hold strategies that I personally like. Once again, these are made to be bought and held for long periods of time. I'm talking 10, 20, and 30 plus years no selling in and out of these things based on which way the stock market winds are blowing from year to year, or to be honest, from day to day or week to week or month to month. Yes, you're going to have up years. Yes, you're going to have down years, but over time, your money should grow by following these strategies over the long term. If you wanna be completely hands off with managing your portfolio, then the first option is to just choose a simple target date retirement fund. Each of the three major platforms offer their own type of TDF for you to pick from. If you're younger or have a higher risk tolerance, want to go 100% stocks and be very hands-off as well, then a total world index fund or the ETF version is a good choice. When you put money into this fund, you're investing in a little under 10,000 stocks across the world. I also like the two fund portfolio where you pick an individual US stock fund like VOO or VTI and also add in an international fund like VXUS. Going this route would basically be like splitting up a total world fund into two individual funds that cover US only stocks and all non US stocks as well. If you want some bonds, then the three fund portfolio is a good option as well. It's basically just the two fund portfolio, but you add in a bond index fund or ETF like BND. I have videos on the two and three fund portfolio as well as target date funds, which I will link up down in the description below. If you want to grow your Roth IRA to be worth anywhere between 600,000 and over a million dollars, there's a few things that you need to know. First, do your best to never miss a year where you max out your contribution. Doing everything in your power to max out this account every single year is going to be extremely important to this outcome. I understand that life can happen, so there could be a year here or there that you might not be able to invest the full amount, and that is perfectly fine but try to make sure that times like this are the exception and not the rule. As I touched on a little bit before, during years like this, just try to invest at least something into the account. Next is time. 
getting the money invested and giving it time to grow is going to determine how much you have in this account. I'm of the opinion that it's best to invest money as soon as it gets deposited into your Roth IRA. Now this is backed up by research and it's why this year and past years, I invested 100% of my money the day that I got it deposited into my Roth IRA. Lastly is your investment returns. Now here's the problem. This sort of thing is out of your control. A lot of people will say, oh, I can control my investment returns. Most of them can't. They say they can, but they can't. We can use history to get an idea of what returns have been over different time periods in the past, but it's not guaranteed to play out that exact same way going forward. For example, over the past handful of recent 30 year rolling periods, we can see that all of the average annual returns are in the range of 11 to 12%. If things played out the same way over the next 30 years, for your Roth IRA where you got an 11% average annual return and maxed out these $7,000 per year, then your account would be worth about $1.4 million. While I hope this is how everything works out for you, I personally suggest expecting a lower average annual return like 7%. Sure, the account will only be worth $660,000 instead of over a million, but that's still $660,000 of tax-free money you have. Heck, even just maxing out the account for one year would turn your money into over $50,000 in 30 years and over $100,000 in 40. Also keep in mind that every year or few years, the government increases the maximum that you can contribute to your Roth IRA. So as that increases and you continue investing more, your account could be worth more than $660,000 in 30 years. So aim a little low with your expected investment returns and who knows, if things end up better, you're in a great spot. If they don't, then hey, you've already planned for a lower average annual return compared to history anyways. There are some additional Roth IRA mistakes that you need to look out for, which you can learn about in this video to your left next. Make sure to share the video with someone that you think it could help. Hit that thumbs up button and check out M1 Finance down in the description below. I'll see you in the next one, friends. Done.